Right now on Florida's Voice, violent pro-Hamas protests break out at campuses across the country, but not at the University of Florida, where police arrest several people who refuse to comply. Here in Florida, uh, you know, if you are violating appropriate conduct, uh, especially if you're warned, uh, you could be expelled, and they're willing to do that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, okay. Florida school districts paying for lessons teaching kids how to be activists. Is it in your kid's classroom? Find out what Florida's Voice learned about lessons from the Anti-Defamation League in a special investigation you will only see here. And this video is making waves across the nation after Boca Bash boaters dump trash into our ocean. That and more stories from across the state, today on Florida's Voice. Welcome to Florida's Voice. I'm senior reporter Amber Jo Cooper filling in for Brendan Leslie. This week, several pro Hamas activists are facing criminal charges after being arrested while protesting at the University of Florida. Our news director, Anita Padilla, has more. Amber, there are nine people now facing a variety of criminal charges. Some of them aren't even students, but for those who were the university, said it's not complicated at all. They knew the rules, they said, and they broke them, and now they must face the consequences. These are the faces of the people now facing misdemeanor and felony criminal charges in Alachua County. They range in age from 20 to 26, and that their charges range from failing to obey lawful commands and resisting without violence to trespassing after warning. One man even spit on police. In Florida, uh, you can you can say things, uh, you can have positions, that's fine, uh, but when you're not going to let you ha set up a tent city in the middle of a university, that is not going to happen here. Governor Ron DeSantis reacted to the UF arrest during a press conference this week where he said more and more of these pro-Hamas protests across the country are becoming increasingly violent and pointed out that Jewish students and professors are now being targeted with hate. That is toxic. That is an environment that if you're a Jewish student, you are not safe in that environment. They are blocking Jewish students from being able to go to class. They are harassing Jewish professors. They are doing things that are far beyond them just expressing their opinions. And I think that as much as I disagree with their opinions, you know, you know, they, they have a right to do that, but you don't have a right to commandeer the university. The University of Florida warned its students late last week about protest activities that were and were not allowed. Here's the list. This week, they put out this statement following the arrest saying, quote, this is not complicated. The University of Florida is not a daycare and we do not treat protesters like children. They knew the rules, they broke the rules and they'll face the consequences. For many days, we have patiently told protesters, many of whom are outside agitators, that they were able to exercise their right to free speech and free assembly. And we also told them that clearly prohibited activities would result in a trespassing order from UPD, barring them from all university properties for three years and an interim suspension from the university. The university also said in their statement that university police patiently and consistently reiterated the rules. They were given several warnings and ample opportunities to comply as the arrest we showed you came after they refused. Reporting for Florida's Voice, Anita Padilla. Back to you, Amber. Florida Highway Patrol also assisted university police with those arrests. The suspects we showed you in this report have already had their first court appearance on Tuesday morning. Florida Republican Congressman Corey Mills says that Congress needs to find out who is behind the funding of the pro-Hamas groups that have been overtaking colleges nationwide. Mills says it's time to investigate just who is pulling the strings and whether a foreign adversary is calling the shots or even orchestrating the operations. The lawmaker from Central Florida blasted the protests at Columbia and Yale as disgraceful. Mills is demanding university presidents be more active and vocal in calling out anti-Semitism. Here at home, the chancellor of the University System of Florida is making sure that students have graduation ceremonies without any disruptions from protesters. 
Chancellor Ray Rodriguez sent out this memo to all presidents of the state's university system, urging them to take any steps necessary to ensure the safety of attendees during the graduation ceremony. He said these events are not a platform for disruptive political activism, especially for what he says are genocidal terrorists. He called the graduation ceremonies important milestones for students and says it is important that they take place. Well, it's official. Fake meat won't be produced, sold, or distributed in the state of Florida, and nothing can make Florida farmers happier to hear the news. Republican Senator Jay Collins and Agriculture Commissioner Wilton Simpson held a press conference in Wakula alongside Florida farmers. The governor signed off on Senate Bill 1084. That legislation prohibits and creates penalties for making, selling, and distributing lab-grown meat in Florida. The push for fake meat comes from the globalist organizations like the World Economic Forum. Simpson tells Florida's Voice the concern is not only for Florida farmers who raise livestock, but also consumers. Essentially, you would receive a biomass um, into a um, restaurant, a growing facility of some sort. You would then grow that um, biomass in a petri dish. And then you would, using a 3D printer, then you would make it look like the piece of meat that you would like to customarily eat. And of course, every bit of that process is fake. Every bit of that process is, um, uh, is something that the legislature sure did not want to tolerate. The Department of Agriculture did not want to tolerate and was driven substantially by the net zero folks. They believe you have to get rid of our cattle industry to be able to get to net zero by 2035 or 2050, whatever their goal is. You heard him mention ESG, that's environmental, social, and governance. Well, Simpson explained that the WEF and groups are trying to push this ideology onto Florida businesses and ultimately farmers. ESG has been a big factor. Um, it's an existential threat to agriculture. Me and there was 12 of us, 12 agriculture commissioners, I believe, from around the country, wrote a letter to the six largest banks in the country asking them um, we were going to be subpoenaing their records. We're going to be reviewing their ESG policies, the global UN net zero 2050 program that they were all in. When we wrote that letter two months ago um, and they received it, three of those immediately dropped out of that program. And they actually came out with a public statement and said, look, we're dropping out of that. If you want to really put farmers out of business, besides the regulatory structure that the Biden administration is very fond of, um, then you go to finance. If we can't get finance to plant our crops or to, to purchase our equipment and things of that nature, you've also put us out of business. So there was a, there's a multi... Um, you know, faceted front that was being used against farmers. A big story is making waves on social media after a photographer caught a group of partiers throwing trash into the ocean from a boat. Reporter Michelle Vissarina has more. It is so appalling when you see something like this happen. Amber, when I saw the video, my jaw dropped as I'm sure a number of other people had similar feelings based on the reactions that were posted on social media. A YouTube video captures the moment the partiers are seen dumping not one, but two bins filled with trash into the ocean after the event. You can see there are others on the boat who seem oblivious to what is taking place. Not one tried to stop the young men from dumping their trash into the water. Understandably, this video ignited a flurry of angry comments on social media. The event is called the Boca Bash. It occurs on the last Sunday in April. This year, approximately 10,000 participants showed up celebrating at Lake Boca Raton. The organizers of the bash put out a statement on Facebook saying they could not be more angered and disturbed by the actions of the boaters, and said they quickly identified who the boaters were after the video had been posted. But the identity of the boaters has not been revealed to the media, and so it remains a mystery as to who was doing this. While we don't know their identities, we do know the event itself did result in the separate arrests of nearly 20 people. These are the mugshots for those suspects booked on a number of charges related to boating under the influence and drug possession. Under Florida's litter law, people caught dumping waste over 15 pounds into waterways could be charged with a misdemeanor and the penalty could lead to one year in jail, a fine, and or one year probation. I'm Michelle Vesserina reporting for Florida's Voice. Amber, back to you. Florida's Voice reached out to city leaders for a comment on this story but did not hear back. We've got some big news coming out of Madison County, where the numbers show that the county has flipped Republican. 
The news comes just after the state's GOP broke a historic 900,000 voter registration lead statewide. To give you an idea of how far they've come, back in 2020, Democrats held the lead over Republicans in registered voters. They were 100,000 voters ahead of the GOP. Four years later, you can see the dramatic swing to the grand old party. It also comes just days after GOP Chair Evan Power hosted an event in Madison County where they registered Republican voters. If there was any doubt Republicans are working hard to defeat Democrats up and down the ticket, look no further than the meeting between Governor Ron DeSantis and former President Donald Trump. The two had a meeting recently in Miami as President Trump kicks off his 2024 operation into high gear to defeat Joe Biden. Florida's voice was able to independently confirm the meeting, which took several hours. The governor has agreed to help the former president in his efforts to take back the White House. Parents are sounding the alarm as hundreds of Florida schools have been found to be participants in a controversial program created by the Anti-Defamation League. We took a deep dive into this program and our findings may shock you. Nobody knows. It's like a big, no. like, secret. This is the ADL's No Place for Hate program. Hundreds of schools, both private and public, are a part of the program as listed on their website. Activities instruct students to, quote, examine identities, reflect on biased behavior, and learn new ways to challenge bias and bullying. Schools in the program have to form a committee, take a pledge, and participate in activities to get the designation. At first glance, it seems like a pretty normal concept, but when you dig deeper into the program, Parents say very, you know, liberal, very left leaning. One parent who has a child in a private school spoke with us on condition we hide her identity and said she discovered their eighth grade daughter had been participating in the program when she began asking strange questions about her race. She said, I dug deeper and found out that a program that was pitched as anti bullying was actually something very different. Given the multitude of private schools enrolled in this program, the scope of its implementation remains uncertain. The Anti-Defamation League claims to be a leading anti-hate organization. However, critics like Elon Musk have said the ADL, quote, pursues a far-left political agenda rather than focusing on combating anti-Semitism. I don't think we should be tied to it because it does take different political stances. Now let's dive into the program. Lessons include anti-bias training, teaching how to move from kindness to social justice, even linking to an article that uses the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting as an example and said students engaged in social activism to address the root of gun violence. It teaches kids how to be activists, including role playing. This is an educational issue. We're putting in social topics that is telling our children to become activists as young as kindergarten. And lessons also teach students that it is racist to use terms like all lives matter and build the wall. Gender identity teachings include the importance of pronouns and everyday bias and activism, including teaching kids how to use hashtags such as hashtag driving while black and hashtag shopping while black. There's also lessons on political violence from January 6 and how voter laws can be a threat to democracy. I personally do not think that they should be affiliated with the ADL. Again, it is very biased. We reached out to Miami-Dade County Public Schools, which has many schools in the program, and asked them to comment on this story and we did not hear back. We also reached out to Broward County School District about this and it claims they don't use the controversial lesson plans and only participate in non-ADL programs such as Red Ribbon Week and Peace Week and it quotes other initiatives. If that's the case, it is not clear why Broward is paying the ADL to be a part of their program if they claim not to use the lessons. Look at what we found. We obtained a contract with the Broward County Board where it shows the ADL is receiving $9,000 through a grant for this program, which was approved by the Broward School Board in a 6-2 vote in December of 2022. This contract goes until 2025. Parents also have questions on the climate assessments, which are required to be a part of the program. They have the staff and the students sign a pledge. Then assess your school climate. Um, I do question number three especially. How are they becoming an ADL, no place for hate school, if they're not doing a climate assessment? So what are they basing their activities off? I think that it's like an onion. You're going to keep unpeeling it 
and it's going to get it's going to get pretty bad. Previous reports show even more money up to $100,000 was given to the ADL for Broward School District by the foundation in 2019. We asked both the Broward and Miami-Dade school board members and superintendents if they feel it is appropriate to be affiliated with the ADL given the nature of this program and did not receive any responses. I think they refuse to answer the question because they want to, some people want to push this agenda on children. We reached out to the ADL on this story and we did not hear back. We also sent our findings over to the Department of Education and they said they're taking a look into the matter. But for now, we're going to keep investigating and looking more into the funding behind this program. Parents, we encourage you to reach out to us if you have any more information. Contact us on social media or our website. Florida's six-week abortion ban, also known as the Heartbeat Protection Act, took effect May 1st. The statute states that a physician cannot knowingly perform or induce a termination of pregnancy if the fetus is more than six weeks old. One major exception is if pregnancy is a result of rape, incest, or human trafficking up to 15 weeks. The bill was carried last year by Republican Senator Aaron Grawl and Republican Representatives Jennifer persons Mollica and Jennifer Kennedy. Florida's Voice for the Unborn, a pro-life lobbying group, praised the law on social media and said this will save tens of thousands of unborn children's lives annually here in the Sunshine State. Democrats, including Senate Minority Leader Lauren Book, issued statements this week. Book said the move is a dangerous step back in time and encouraged women to call her office if they need to be connected to assistance for travel funds to get an abortion out of state. They also are encouraging people to vote for an abortion amendment on the ballot this November, which would protect abortion access in Florida. DeSantis previously called on voters to vote no on the amendment. Florida is aggressively pushing back on the Biden administration's attempt to overhaul Title IX. Attorney General Ashley Moody joined several other attorneys general in a lawsuit against the federal government's Title IX updates. We have a copy of the suit here. Moody says the updates provide protections for gender identity and sexual orientation. Moody says the new Title IX rules shred protections for women and allows men into dressing rooms with young girls and women. Joining Florida in the lawsuit are Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. In campaign news, former Florida Senate President Mike Herodopoulos announced his candidacy for Florida's 8th Congressional District after fully qualifying for the 2024 election. Republican Representative Bill Posey announced his retirement and support for Herodopoulos. Herodopoulos served as president of the Senate from 2010 to 2012. Additional endorsements started pouring in this week as well, like U.S. Senators Marco Rubio and Rick Scott. Also throwing their support behind him is U.S. Rep. Anna Polina Luna, State Rep. Randy Fine, State Senator Aaron Grawl, and Florida's Chief Financial Officer Jimmy Petronas, and more. Finally, a Winter Park woman is making Florida proud with the work she is doing in her community. Judy Charuz runs the Winter Park Lost Pets website, where she helps to reunite lost pets with their owners. This is just one of the many, many happy endings that she shares on the site. To date, she has helped reunite more than 2,500 pets. Judy says she is successful because she is able to use an alert system. That alert system goes out to 20,000 people through emails and on Facebook. The entire project is run by volunteers, and we congratulate Judy Charuz for following her path passion of keeping fur families together. That's all for this week. For more news across the Sunshine State, head to our website, flvoicenews.com. I'm Amber Jo Cooper. Thanks for watching and see you next week.